All right, here we are. It is Friday, and as we do on Fridays, the Friday financial wrap up with Mr. Michael Zuber. How are you, Michael? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for doing this. It is Christmas Eve. We're still doing this. So thank you for your commitment and always coming through. So uh, I look forward to these conversations, even when the stock market is closed. It's actually closed today, but uh, good stuff. I love it. And this is not a pre recorded. We're actually doing this. It's Friday morning. Yep. It's uh, Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. So we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a happy holiday. Um, really a lot to be grateful for. Um, you know, for so sure. many good things this year. And, and, um, I, I want to get into the news, but at the end, I think, Michael, let's just uh, let's cap about I want you to think about what are you most excited and grateful for mm -hmm. from 2021. OK. And then even in 2022. So we're going to finish with that. OK, but let's get into the financial news, PCE and inflation. What's going on there this week? Yeah. So PCE, not not something that's often talked about with just the average you know, individual or consumer investor. PCE is important, stands for personal consumption expenditure. It is important or vital because it is the Fed's favorite inflation metric. You and I probably get impacted most by CPI, consumer price index. We feel PPI, producer price index, but the Fed looks at PCE. Unfortunately, PCE is highest since July of 1982, not good, 5.7%. X food, X gas, 4.7%, all not good. All reasons the Fed needs to step up and start raising rates. Their foot on the gas too much. They got to extract uh, liquidity from the system. It is not going good and, and it's still accelerating. So very, very, uh, very bad news. Very interesting. We'll keep an eye on it. Um, obviously, we've been talking about inflation for feels like at least the last six, seven, eight months. So mm -hmm. um, it is real. And now we're all obviously seeing it in mainstream media. So yep. Very interesting times. What what happened this week in new home sales? New home sales. Uh, it's going to be one of those interesting things that you have to look at. You have to get beyond the headlines. If I wanted to, I could scare you, Ty, and say new home sales crash 14%. That is technically a true statement. However, it's equally true that transaction or uh, new home values are up 19%. Transactions values, right? Transaction values. The thing to watch for with new home sales is the builders have been telling you this was coming. I do a daily show. As you know, we talk weekly. What have they been selling or telling us? Lennar, Pulte, all the others. L materials are up. We have dead days. We can't raise prices. So we're slowing down construction because we don't want to take price risk. We can't find people. There's labor problems. So the, all the new builders have been telling us we are releasing less product. Mm -hmm. So Ty, when you release less product, guess what? You sell less stuff. Yep. But oh, by the way, prices are still up 19%. So the builders are doing just fine. But again, if you want to be negative, you could say that new home sales crashed 14%. That's transactions, not prices. So be very careful what people are telling you. Very interesting. It, it, I mean, overall, I mean, we've just had low inventory and that's going to be still pretty consistent into 2022. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. November, a new, a new low. So it, it's, it's still going the wrong direction. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. Let's tell me what's going on with Nike mm -hmm. in China versus the U S what's that yeah. all about? Yeah. So Nike is an interesting story. So Nike released their earnings report. Great numbers. When you look at the top line, bottom line, their stock went up, I'm sure, I didn't check. But I'm interested in the story because what have I been telling you about China for the last 90 days? I've been telling you that the Chinese consumer is scared. And when, I don't care if you're Chinese, German, Australian, or American. When you are scared, you don't spend. So guess what happened in China when Nike released their earnings? Chinese consumers spent 14% less than last year. That's a huge drop. They do billions of dollars in China. So a 14% miss in China is bad. Wow. It was made up by North America. What have I been telling you is going on in North America? North America, we have been telling all the consumers, no inventory, buy early. Christmas is going to be, you know, no presents on the shelves. So what did the American consumers do? They rushed out. They bought early. They bought stuff that wasn't on sale. So all of this is, Mike Zuber has been telling you this is coming. 
The North American shoppers are afraid of shortages, so they bought early. The Chinese consumers are scared because they don't know what's going on, so they're saving. This is all leading up to a very dicey first half of next year. And Nike just further accentuated what I said. The American super consumer is spending early. The Chinese consumer is scared. It's going to be interesting next year. So we can probably expect some shift in earnings with Nike, as well as maybe other international conglomerates that are also very dependent on China. Would you agree? Uh, well, I would, I would say it's fair to assume at this point, Starbucks and Nike have told us the same thing. The Chinese consumer is not buying. In fairness, maybe, maybe, maybe China pissed off, maybe Nike pissed off China and they're buying Reebok instead. I don't know. It's possible. But again, a 14% miss on a billion dollars, that's more than, hey, we're not going to buy Nike. We're going to buy Reebok instead. It's possible there's some of that. But yeah, it's, I would say if you're dependent on the Chinese consumer, be concerned, right? And then the American consumer, I think the American consumer is buying early. I'm concerned that the American consumer is depleting their savings and they're going to have nothing left next year. So re retail is going to be pretty interesting. And oh, by the way, when retail finally gets all this stuff out of the docks, they're going to have oversupply. So again, I told people we should move Christmas from December to July. We'd buy stuff on sale, but nobody listened. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, let, let's continue. Let, let's talk about what, what happened with interest rates. We always talk about interest rates. Yeah. What's going on this week with interest rates? Interest rates are just wild, right? Fed comes out. We're going to taper. We're going to raise rates and rates go lower. Not normal, right? kind of backwards. They went lower for a couple of days. Now they're up. They're, they're up pretty consistently. Uh, but also when you talk about real estate, not only do we talk about owner ox, but we also have this pool of money called non-QM lenders, non-qualified mortgage, typically not selling to Fannie and Freddie, like insurance money, hedge fund money. Those lenders have already raised rates. They heard the Fed on Wednesday of last week and they've raised rates. I have non-QM lenders in my circle and they all called me and said, hey, the Fed talked on Wednesday. We're raising rates Monday. So there are people already raising rates because they see what the Fed's doing. Very interesting times. We always, always, uh, any financial news that Michael Zuber's doing, he's always keeping his eye on interest rates. So oh, you can absolutely. count on that. I love it. So let's wrap up with California population. I, yeah. I think that's always been a hot topic for the last couple of years. What's going on there this week? So I've lived in California for, for my life, right? Fif nearly 50 years. And California has always had positive migration. You can always count on it, right? Always going, whatever the millions of people. Last year was an anomaly. California lost, right? Couple, I think it was 180,000 or something. It was a one-off. It was a pandemic, blah, 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 blah. People could write it off. Well, not anymore. The Census Bureau just released. We now have two years in a row and it's accelerating. I think it was 187 last year. Now it's 263. And most importantly, Ty, we are not getting the next generation, the college graduate, the engineers, the master's degree. They are choosing instead of coming to make their money in the Silicon Valley, they're going to Texas. They're going to Nashville. They're going to Florida. So I think California population now two years in a row, that is a trend that is a problem. As Elon Musk has just said, over-regulation, over-tax, uh, people are choosing to make their money elsewhere. And again, what people always are looking for in the Bay Area is, oh, does that mean Bay Area prices are going to fall? No, we don't have enough transactions to make it fall. And if we keep, But if we keep this two-year decline going for a decade and we, 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 in, we miss an entire technology cycle, yeah, we could see some price declines because the fact you got to spend two million bucks to buy a 1950 house in Palo Alto is nuts. So it's not going to impact prices immediately, but this is a bad trend. It is now a trend. Two data points make a trend. And Gavin Newsom is doing this 100%. He has caused this by over taxes, over regulation, stupid policies. It is 100% his doing. And Texas and Nashville and, and Miami are winning uh, and we're losing. And I say that as a California resident. Very interesting time. So we're all obviously Michael and I are both residents of California. Uh, we're both very active in the California Absolutely. markets. Uh, so we pay attention to that. So um, we will continue to keep our eye on California. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, I, I asked you in the beginning, um, 2021 um, has been a turbulent year, obviously a lot of chaos, but also a lot of opportunity. Um, what are you most grateful for? And maybe with the community, with the 
the one rental at a time community. Maybe just speak to that. Yeah. So thank you for this opportunity. What I would tell you, what I'm most thankful for is I've finally gotten comfortable in my own skin. And what I mean by that is when you come out with a sheer desire to help people, you have to realize there's a, there's a lot of haters out there. There's a lot of people that push back and assume lots of bad things. I've now come to realize that most people are spectators, right? I, I relate a lot of, my whole life has been about sports and most people are spectators. They're in the stands. They literally want to boo you. They want to get drunk. They want to boo you. Maybe they want to cheer, but most people want to boo. I don't care anymore about spectators. I care about players. If you want to change your financial future, you want to talk about real estate investing, I got you. I know the path. I can help you. And again, I'm going to be very clear. You are not a player when you get a deal. You are a player when you make the fundamental choice you want to try. You become a player when you're willing to practice. You are a player when you have a buy box and daily discipline. Again, you are not a player when you get your first rental. You are a player when you fundamentally make the decision to get off the sidelines and onto the field. I am now comfortable with that. It drove me crazy when I couldn't make the spectators happy or when the spectators threw FUD in fear and crap my direction. I no longer care. I'm only worried about players. I know if you're a player, I can help. If you're a spectator, you don't speak my language. I can't help you. If you want to be scared in fear and boo people, I'm not, I'm not your, uh, that's not me. That's not who I am. I want to promote doing the work. I want to tell you what the work is. I want to get you around thousands of other people who are doing the work. And I'm okay with that. You know, there were probably 10 X more spectators and players. I'm only worried about spectators. I will let all the other bigger YouTube channels preach fear uh, and deal with spectators. I don't care. They want to make money off them and make clicks. That's not who I am. I'm going to be positive, do the work. So I am, I'm happy for uh, being comfortable in my own skin. Finally. I love it. I love it. And, and so I'll just share too. I love what you shared and, um, it's interesting that I feel, you know, it, it's really cool how Adrian and you and Omar and just our whole community has come together. And it's cool how we're all like, you know, you have all these different playlists and all this different content and we collaborate. And then even like with Pace Morby and with mm -hmm. Laura, and I see with like, uh, uh, Rylas Dana and just, yeah. we have such a great community. And, um, I would say that this year has been such a shift of, you know, not just wanting to be a go-giver, but the fact that we're actually doing things, you know, yeah. we had Toys for Tots was amazing. That drive, the way that the community stepped up. Seven love, grand, man, 7,000 bucks. I, I, I especially love the fact that that later that day, you text me, it was like another 11, 1200 yeah. bucks or something came in, you know, in the ninth inning, you know, yeah, so. great. Yeah. And again, people also came in and said, Hey, if you're still short, I got you three people that morning. I know today's the last day. Last we heard you were four and a buck short. If nobody steps up, I'll cut the check. I'm like, wow. And that was three people that did that. It was it, it, one rental at a time is attracting just the, just awesome people. So thank you for being a part of it and helping me every week. I love it. And I want to just say thank you to everybody who watches you know, all the community, the people that share these videos, the people that subscribe, the people that come to the webinars, all of it. Like we just really appreciate, we value, we love our community. Um, if this was your first time watching, follow Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. He puts out the best real estate content on YouTube. Hmm. It's free. It's incredible ad value, the daily news. I love what he does. Two books, the one rental at a time book, but then also the second book, the millionaires, the millionaire, uh, fifteen conversations with millionaires. Yep, there you go. Amazing, absolutely amazing, and just so excited for what we're doing and the new year. We got a live event coming up in January. So many beautiful things that are happening in the one rental at a time community, as well as the collaboration with Evo, with Adrian, with Omar, all everything that we do, our whole entire community. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. God bless. Happy holidays. Thank you so much.